Hello, this is Sculpt January number 28, and this time the category was Cyber. And I went for a cyberpunk style gun. So just a sort of sci-fi futuristic gun. And I took the opportunity to try out lots of hard surface modeling techniques. I spent quite a few hours looking them up, trying to figure out good ways of doing things. So I'm trying lots of different techniques in one in a sense, just to practice and try them out. I had no idea what I was going to create in terms of the shape, even the style. So I'm just pulling things around using different tools. The first tool you can see me using a lot here is the trim brush, also known as the scrape brush, and that flattens out the geometry. And then I'm building up the model using the clay strips brush and the crease brush. What I found out from this sculpt and from my research was that the crease brush combined with the pinch brush combined with the flatten brush is the best way to go in order to create hard edges. I had always thought that the crease brush and the pinch brush were kind of the same thing but one was just holding control down and doing the opposite, but that's not the case. The crease brush pulls geometry together and kind of folds it together and it does really affect the shape whereas the pinch brush will just pull geometry together but keep the shape. It's hard to explain and you kind of have to try it. I will definitely do a tutorial on that. But I think I've still got to get used to these techniques more before going into a full tutorial. Most of this is me just experimenting and trying things out and you can see where I fail and in some places succeed. It is quite tough and it's quite difficult to work out exactly what the settings for the brushes ought to be at times. So in a way I'm not too worried about the shape, I'm just moving things around and pushing them into position as I see fit but generally I'm thinking how do I get sharp edges and how do I get curved edges and all these sort of things. I might be too high detail at this point because ideally you get the shape and then you refine the detail with the pinch brush late on. I'm also using the sculpt tools a bit more here to do simple booleans and add shapes. Before joining, it's important to reset the scale and rotation, otherwise you might get problems. But the sculpt tools do a pretty good job there. I had hoped to use the grease cut tool, but that kept going wrong for me, I just could not get it to work and it was a real frustration. I must have spent an hour at least uh, screaming at the computer, thinking what on earth is going on. And it was saying I hadn't drawn a grease pencil line when there was a grease pencil line on the model. And I've no idea. I tried it a few times and it worked and then went to my main model and I just couldn't get it to work. So big frustrations there. You don't necessarily need it, you can do it all with booleans, but 
It's just another tool that I thought would increase my workflow. I'm using masking a lot as well. I think that's quite good on hard surface models. So you mask out an area and draw that area in. Either pushing it in or pulling it out and then re-sculpt and refine the shape. There's lots of bits I don't like about this model and you can see it's still a tiny bit sort of lumpy and blobby. That's the problem you often get with hard surface modeling. Getting those lines clean and straight can be really tough. And you can see where I've boolean in those grooves and I go to those later and I kind of give up in the end of trying to make them flat because I think uh, the trim brush is your friend there of making everything flat then you go in and start refining the edges and I was refining edges too early and things and that all just comes with experience I'm assuming. This took me an awful long time um, but yes like I was saying uh, it's just experimenting with shapes and techniques so I wasn't too worried about the time on this one I just wanted to get used to hard surface modeling and try out techniques. I'm kind of looking forward to doing vehicle which is coming up in a couple of days time. Maybe I can figure out the grease cut tool by then as well. I'm also using the stroke method line quite often with the pinch brush and you can see that's quite good at smartening up your edges but the main thing is to have flat surfaces around them and that's what I needed to refine more before going into this. I was running out of time at this point so I just thought I'm going to tidy up the mesh and hopefully finish. I'd kind of love to know what ZBrush does with hard surface modeling and what tools there are for that. I imagine they're probably pretty much the same as Blender, except they're kind of easier to work out and find. That seems to be the case with Blender. You can kind of do everything, but it's just kind of weird the way you have to go around doing it. So you can see in these grooves, I'm really trying to smarten them up. I had to smooth them all out and then do these pinch lines. And then you can see it just looks a bit blobby in the end. So I go back to my scrape tool, as you can see on the left hand side there, and scrape it all out in an attempt to make it flat, which is just about work. But the scrape tool can leave funny geometry, so you have to smooth that out. And so you end up still with a tiny bit of blobbiness which is very frustrating. The flatten brush is quite interesting. It doesn't completely flatten, it sort of polishes, which is another name for it apparently. So it smooths out, it's like a an advanced version of the smooth brush. I would have liked to have been able to do more with the texturing really uh, because I wanted all sorts of lights shining from the gun in different places. I think that could have been quite fun.
Now what you can do is leave your objects separate and sculpt them individually. I might try that on the vehicle one. But for the moment I just wanted to work on the tools without having to go between shapes and all this sort of stuff. And I didn't want to have to bake out separate maps and things. I've put on a metallic met cap for a change. Uh, that's so you can sort of see the blobbiness in the shape. It's quite useful that. And so I can flatten things out a bit better. This is where I'm getting the pinch brush out and uh, making those refinements and the minor details. It's not too bad at this stage, uh, but could have flattened out more surfaces, I think, before this stage. But it's all a great learning experience. Good idea to move between different met caps just to get different looks and see different parts of your shape. I did try using some sort of stamp things that I had in my brush collection, but I probably needed to up the polys and because I'd already done the pinch brush at this point, uh, doing a detailed flood fill was actually destroying the topology there. So do that before doing the pinch brush is the thing I've worked out there. didn't like these things on top so I thought I'd just edit them slightly or edit one at least just so there was a bit of interest to them. I've heard artists talk about the 70-30 rule rather than having the whole thing really detailed you have 30% and that's supposed to look quite cool apparently. So baked out my normals, cavity and ambient occlusion as usual and just adding some interest here. I was thinking of doing a sort of worn scratched metal but I put it in completely the wrong node order and just thought actually I'm going to leave this for now, I need to research that a bit more, uh, make sure I get it to work next time. I'm looking forward to doing more work on texturing and I think uh, that's going to be part of a challenge for me soon. Uh, not necessarily February because I've got lots of tutorials to do, but perhaps, we'll see. So there we have it, number 28, Cyber, or Cyberpunk Gun in this case. Thanks ever so much for all your support, it really is massively appreciated, I can't say that enough. It's really nice to see the comments on YouTube and the advice as well, and I've learnt a lot from the comments, so thanks very much. If you've got any advice for hard surface modelling, I'd love to hear it. So thanks again, and the links are in the description, so get along to Sculpt January, and I'll see you there.